What's up guys, it's Brad from The Architect here. This is the second part of our recently uploaded Blender 3D camera tracking tutorial. In this video, I'll be going through the basic compositing process, showing you how you can composite the CGI passes that we exported from Blender in the last video on top of our live action shot inside of After Effects in a very simple yet effective way. Anyways guys, let's get started here. Let's go ahead and do a quick recap inside of Blender of the various render passes we exported. This is our project file here that we tracked inside of Blender and added our City Builder 3D asset to. And uh, as you can see here in our compositing tab, we have several different file outputs here. We have our beauty pass of our building going to our main composite pass here. Then we have our mist pass for the scene going to another file output. Then we have the ambient occlusion going to another separate file output. And then of course we have our background shadow pass going to another separate file output, which is on our background view layer here as well. So we have rendered out the animation inside of Blender here, and now we're going to go to After Effects. And I'm going to show you how you can easily combine your passes together in a very simple way. So so let's get started inside of After Effects here. All right, so here we are inside of After Effects. First, let's go ahead and import our live action footage along with our various render passes. So I'll go ahead and go to File, Import, File, and then I'll just go to uh, where I've saved our live action shot from, from Pixabay. And I've just uh, saved it in its own little folder here. And I'll go ahead and open that. And I'll go ahead and just drag this clip and create a new composition with it. And now as you can see, we have our video clip here. And uh, now let's go ahead and import the rest of our passes. We'll go to File Import again. And I'll just go to uh, our output folders here. It's very important to have organized your render passes in one folder. So I've just made a render pass folder. And then I have all of my different passes here separately so I can import them. So we'll just start with the beauty pass and import this EXR sequence. Make sure that Open EXR sequence is selected here if you export it in EXR. Go ahead and open that. And then we'll do the same thing for the rest of our passes. So we have the ambient occlusion pass. And the shadow pass. And we also have the mist pass, but we don't really need it for this shot since it's not very misty in the live action shot. But just keep in mind that you can overlay that and vary the opacity to add some mist to your CG element. All right, so before we overlay any of our render passes on top of our live action shot here in our composition, it's important to make sure that all of our passes are playing back at the same frame rate as our live action shot here. So for our live action shot, our frame rate was at 24 frames per second, and we exported our render passes at 24 24 frames a second. So what we want to do here is we want to make sure that all of our passes here are also at that 24 frames a second. It's super crucial that you do this. Automatically, as you can see here, a lot of the time After Effects is going to change them to 30 frames per second, which is going to not allow you to line up your CG with your live action shot because the timing will be off. And then you're going to think that maybe you tracked the shot wrong or you didn't export correctly. But a lot of the time, it's just that frame rate that's not working. So to change the frame rate of all of our passes here we just go ahead and right click on it go to interpret footage main and then just change the frame rate here to 24 and then I'll just do that again for our ambient occlusion pass here change it to 24 and then once again for our shadow pass and now we should be good to go all right so the first thing we're going to overlay is just our beauty pass we'll just go ahead and drag and drop it and since our footage is a higher resolution than 1920 by 1080, our CG is scaled down a little bit here, so we'll just scale it up to the size of our footage here, and then export in 1080p. And now as you can see, our beauty pass along with our shadow is on top of our live action footage here. And a lot of time this beauty pass export with the shadow is enough for you to composite everything together. However, we did export the shadow pass as well as the uh, ambient occlusion pass. So we're going to go ahead and use those as well. So we'll go ahead and grab the shadow pass next here and just put this right below our beauty pass. And then we'll also just scale it up to the size of our footage here. And as you can see here, this is just our basic shadow pass. Normally I would, I would export the beauty pass without the shadow here. And to do that, all you would do inside of Blender, if you're following from the last tutorial, is we would just go to the background layer here and then reselect this uh, holdout option here. 
And then whenever you export your foreground and background layer, the foreground beauty pass won't contain the shadow and you can uh, have a little bit more control in the compositing process here. But this worked out pretty well, so just keep that in mind for the future in case you want to export that shadow separately like you should normally do. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and just rename our shadow pass here. And what we can use this shadow pass for is uh, in case we want to increase the intensity of the shadow, we can bring this up quite a bit, or we could actually take away some of the shadow as well and just have a little bit more control over it. Finally, we'll go ahead and uh, import our ambient occlusion pass. So we'll just put this on top of our beauty pass and we'll just rename this one ambient occlusion pass. And again, we'll just uh, scale it up to the size of our footage. And we're going to have to do some tricks here to, and we're going to have to use some tricks here to isolate our ambient occlusion path since we didn't select our mask holdout on our background layer with our ground plane. Because of that, like in our beauty pass with our shadow in the background, we also have this background plane in the background for our ambient occlusion pass in the background. But uh, we have some workarounds to deal with that, so we can still use this ambient occlusion pass fairly effectively. All right, so first let's go ahead and just uh, disable our ambient occlusion pass here and the first thing I want to do is just make sure that our shadow is dark enough here and I think it's dark enough already so I'm not sure we need to bring any more of our shadow pass into the scene at all but if we wanted to we could go ahead and enable it and then control the amount of shadow through the opacity setting here as you can see so that's what you can use the shadow pass for if you didn't export the shadow with the beauty pass like you would normally do you would just change that opacity setting right there so anyways for for the beauty pass, I'm noticing that our CG element here is a little bit bright. So let's go ahead and add some basic color correction to it. So I'll just go to effect, color correction, curves, and then we'll just uh, drag the curves down here a little bit and kind of just match it to our scene a little bit better. And we could also increase the contrast of it as well in case uh, the uh, footage is a little bit more contrasty than the CG itself. Uh, but this is looking pretty good here. Just bring it down a tiny bit to match it to our environment a little bit better. And now what we're going to do, since our shadow doesn't really uh, interact with our cliffs here really well, what we're gonna do is we're just going to feather out the shadow by the road here to kind of blend it into the scene a little bit better. So uh, for very simple shots like this, you can get away with some uh, very simple techniques. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to, while our beauty pass is selected, I'll just select the mask tool and then I'll just kind of select part of the shadow here like this. And then I'll go to the mask layer here, change it to subtract. And now, as you can see, if we increase the feathering, we can kind of control the fall off of our shadow and uh, kind of have it blend into our scene a little bit better without it going all the way to the cliff here. So um, just a little trick here, maybe something like this, increase the feathering to kind of blend it into the scene a bit more, and then maybe uh, decrease the mask expansion to get it to fall a little bit further. You kind of just play around with it to uh, find the right spot for that shadow to end. This should be pretty good, I think. And now what we'll do is we'll just add a few keyframes to our mask so that the shadow is staying in the right place throughout our shot. So we'll go ahead and select the uh, mask path keyframe here and we'll go to the end of our scene at 15 seconds and then we'll just kind of change uh, where our mask is here. And this is a uh, super rudimentary way to do this. There are a lot of better ways to do this, but again, for some very simple compositing, this can be very effective and can save you a lot of time in the short run anyway, if you don't want to kind of recreate the whole environment of the uh, cliff itself for that shadow itself. So this should be pretty good. Well, maybe we'll add uh, another keyframe in the middle here if it's not working too well. And now, as you can see, if we scroll through our scene, our mask is actually changing to our keyframes that we set for it so that the shadow is staying in the right place. All right, so let's go ahead and add the ambient occlusion pass to enhance the shadows of our CG element a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and enable it here. And again, we shouldn't have rendered out our background plane here, but we can key out the white background here, so that's not too much of a problem. But uh, what we'll do first is we'll just change the uh, mode to multiply. And now as you can see here, if you look closely on our CG element here, we can see that the shadows on our CG element are actually being enhanced by this ambient occlusion pass, which is what, of course, ambient occlusion does. So to get around our little uh, error here in our rendering process, what we can do is we can just go to effect keying, then go to extract, 
and now we can just drag our black point over just barely so we can remove that very white portion of the image and that works pretty well what we're doing is we're just isolating the part of our ambient occlusion pass that is not totally white so as you can see here we're still getting a nice ambient occlusion pass and enhancing those shadows and just getting rid of that white background and uh, what we can do here as you can see there's a little bit of an edge here where our ground plane ends but to deal with that what we can do is we can just go ahead and add a uh, matte choker here and as you can see here that goes right away and we still have our ambient occlusion pass that's enhancing the shadows of our CG element here and giving a little bit more realism and now that we have a cleaner ambient occlusion pass without any problems in the background what we can do is we can to control the ambient occlusion just play around with the opacity and uh, just choose exactly how much of that ambient occlusion we actually want and I think 100 is pretty good so we'll go ahead and leave it there and now finally to finish off our shot here let's just go ahead and add a basic solid layer here and just create a black solid and just create a letterbox so I'll go to the uh, rectangle tool here overlay a little letterbox here change the mask to subtract and as you can see now we have a nice letterbox and then of course you can play around with color correction I'll go ahead and add a new adjustment layer for the color correction and then I'll just go to effect color correction Lumetri color and then I'll just add a basic uh, look here I'll add the Fujifilm look that just makes the colors pop a little bit more you can play around with the shadow or highlight tint or I even play around with the curves I usually play around with the curves a little bit maybe increase the contrast a little but uh, you get the general idea this is how I composited the shot together super simple setup import your live action footage import your various passes and make sure that they're playing back at the proper frame rate for your scene and then start using all that different data for your final composite anyways guys that's it for this video I hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below I'll be going through how you can composite various passes inside of blender as well so stay tuned for that video in the future if you're interested and I'll see you next time.